First thing on the agenda is the approval of the meetings. Is it all board members have time to read the meeting notes? Yes, sir. I look for a motion. That I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of October right. 19th. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Four to zero. Next on the, on the agenda is the chairman's update. Um, one thing that's been going round and round is approval of the subdivisions and who's out, who's left open, and Nancy, no one has responded to your letters. So we have no response to any of these subdivisions. So the ones I'll read read out loud for the record. Hilltop, Av, Lou O'Neill, Twin Springs, Bellevue Heights Estates, is John Mallon. Rivercrest Circle is William Bork. Berthold Extension, um, Tucci Construction. The other one is kind of in limbo, Homeland Ave. We don't have to worry about plowing for that one. But we should send letters out um, where they're not closed out. Well, their permits have expired and we're going to hold them responsible for snow. This way the board is covered. That work for you, Larry? Yeah, and um, um, Ms. Rodriguez and I would like to set up a meeting with you Tuesday morning to sure. kind of go over these. Um, and, you know, and, and the K form submissions is, you know. Okay. Today we have a Special guest, Mr. O'Regan. Uh, Sorry about that. It, no, that's not. That's, that's fine. These were the. These are the properties. Yes. Are you familiar with the ones that are yes. here? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Nancy submitted them uh, maybe two days, two or three days ago, and Larry did, and I discussed them at two o'clock this afternoon. Okay. So we'll leave up to Nancy to put the initial letter out, yep. and if you want to do a follow-up from the DPW. This way, they've been put on notice. Yep. I I'd probably take the lead and, and have Brendan review that. That's that's fine. Okay. We've had some uh, some complaints as we were talking just a minute ago from some of the from some of the uh, abutters of some of these properties that are that are being done with having meetings that are moved, meetings that get canceled. And therefore, being public meetings, there's been no notification gone out to any of the abutters. So we're trying to work out a system that we'll be able to call the abutters, tell them it's been canceled, or tell them the meeting's going forward, or the date the meeting is going to be pushed to. Um, it's only fairness to them. But we get quite a few uh, residents that are upset with, with the process. But I guess this has been the process all along, but we're going to try to change that. So. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, could I just add, if we cancel a meeting, I can understand like maybe letting them know, but if it's continued, they should be following the meetings to see what the outcome is. I mean, every time, every, almost every hearing gets continued for several months. That's correct. We would have to keep notifying, re-notifying the abutters every every time. It's just a quick telephone call. That, that's, well, we have one. It might be a quick telephone call. Call, but it depends how many abutters there are. I'm just saying, who who would be who would you saying that would be who's responsible? Well, we just got we just got um, a submission uh, through the building department that they're not yeah, being I saw notified. That, that email. Right. So I don't know how else to do it. Chris is working on a couple of ideas. Okay. Um, I don't know how else we get it out. If they don't go on and look at the website and see what's on on the planning for that that week or, or whenever it was moved to. And they don't know. So. Well, Nancy sends a letter. She letter sends the notifying original letter them on. when the hearing is, and then when the hearing takes place, if they're at that meeting, if they have interest, they would be at that meeting most likely. Correct. They would see that it gets continued to the next. Not necessarily. Not with the process that we've been. I mean, if 16, it gets canceled. Sixteen thirty nine today just got canceled. Not that there's any about us to that for that project, yeah. but it just got canceled this we'll afternoon. Continue, yeah. It got continued. So there's no notifications, and that's what's been happening. So they come down, they're banging on the door, 
no one here. But so technically, 1639, the abutters to that would be all of Essex Landing? Who would be responsible no, for calling all those people? No, you would just people? notify the I mean, owner. technically, it could end up being potentially a lot of There's only one owner or two owners of Essex Landing. So you, would only no, you wouldn't no, no, uh, notify the people, the people that are renting it. You'd well, only notify the two owners. That's an okay. apartment complex. Am I right, Chris? They, you would have to notify yeah, the people. What that I, as per our discussion the other day, what I'd suggest is, because I've seen this in many other communities, it becomes a problem with longer continued public hearings. And uh, Jeannie's absolutely right. Uh, we only have the legal obligation to provide that one notice. Mm -hmm. And then the expectation is the abutter takes the responsibility to follow a call and make sure it's on the agenda. Okay. But I would be happy, and this is what I've done elsewhere, and it's the only thing that works. I'd be happy to, because um, we're on TV right now, ask that people give me their, their number if they're comfortable with that, and I will call them directly and, and let them know. If you do other things, some people will say, I don't check the internet all the time. I, this is a variety of things. Yep. I'm happy to make that effort to reach out to people directly if they want to give me their contact information, or I'll email them, whatever they prefer. And we'll try that. Thank you. Yeah. Any discussion from the board members? Anything they brought forward? No. Having come time, we'll revert to uh, our consulting engineer, Mr. Larry Durkin. Do you have anything that you'd like to add? I mean, I, I have a report, but that's that's not time to go over this now. That's a report for what in? It's 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 for all the the uh, continuing meetings that were initially on the agenda. I, I believe um, 1639 continued. They continued. Okay. Mr. Chair, if I may, just yes. so we're on the topic. Uh, I spoke with them. Spoke with Attorney Magnus representing them, and. Uh, I told them I would give the board an explanation. They're still working through the peer review responses. They have the peer review reports from Dexter Tech and from Davis Square on the architectural review. They need a little more time because they got the architectural review late. So they want to get everything together in one package, like the board likes, that we can advance so that you have all the information in front of you when we review it. So that's the reason for the continuance. They didn't cancel, they just continued out to the next meeting on the second. So I just wanted to. Thank you. So we can hold that when the applicant comes in? Um, Unless you have something that you want. Specifically for that, that property? Yeah, if you think that we should go forward with it this evening, by all means do so. No, I, I think the thing with 1639 is, is um, you know, there's. I brought up the issues um, of, of, of a sewer evaluation of a water, uh, water system assessment, stormwater permit, um, sewer infiltration and inflow uh, permitting. Um, I've never put that in writing, and that's, in, that's, that, that's all included in, in my report. So, I, you know, so that there's, there's formal written notification in addition to... Uh, Steve, did you do the stormwater report for 1639? We, we did. Review that, yeah. Traffic? Traffic as well. Okay, this is this is the stormwater permit, um, not not the review peer review. Okay. And I think the other thing is, is I think um, I also say you know peer review. I think the DPW engine um, DPW has a chance to review this portion of, of the report yet, and they've been very helpful in, in helping me advance all these projects. Thank you, Brenda. Um, I think um, I say engineering and. DPW will review all documents by written comment. You know, I think what we want to do is to see the peer review comments back and then the revised plans. You know, it's better for us to not look at the plans now. I think when your when um, Tetra Tech's comments are addressed and, and those plans are submitted, that's a more appropriate time for us. You know, um, you know, I also say that you know that there's going to be at some point. When the building, when they get a building permit, then they'll be coming to, um, coming to, and you know, for water, sewer, and drain uh, building permit approvals. But that's subsequent. Um, 
And then um, the one last thing is I think I say engineering DLB will review and make recommendations to the planning board on the hillside protection permits. And that's that's for 1639. Now, does that go through you or does that go through the building department? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm here a little over six months. To best my knowledge, it's the planning board that issues the hillside protection permits. Yeah. It is, it, it's an open application. We have one that's coming before us, yep. Yeah, it's part of the simultaneous application. Right. And, and we didn't rule on the last the last time we were here. Yeah. Okay. I, I can I can transmit my guy, or I can send. You'll have these, and I think if, if these comments get, even though they continue, if these comments get submitted, get forwarded to sixteen thirty nine, I'd appreciate that. Okay. We do that through Nancy. Nancy's Nancy's copied. I copied you too, so Nancy has these in a PDF format. Thank you, Larry. The other projects that are here, I, I can, you know, I don't, I think normally we'll go over that when we deal with the, on the public hearing for each. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just want to ask, did Mr. Rick and Brendan, uh, do you have anything to add? Uh, on, well, he hasn't had a chance to look at 1639 yet, and I think what I'm saying is we're going to look at the plans once the plans are amended, so I'll brief him on that. That's still forth. That's forthcoming. To the planning director, um, subdivision submission, site plans, anything new come in or nothing new, Nancy? Uh, Mr. Chair, through you to the board, uh, just status. We've had a few site plan review applications. One for I think I mentioned this at the last meeting, seventy to seventy-three. Our Ballard, there'll be a site plan review yes, application sir. for uh, a six unit du duplex project. I determined that to be incomplete. The application itself under our requirements was incomplete. And I notified the applicant. That's the Ballard Street. So we're waiting to hear back from them about completing the application. According to our requirements, so that's on hold. That'll probably come back in September, and then um, I think we talked about how 799 Canes was held up a little bit, but they resolved their environmental issues with the, the soil, and so they've submitted a cycling review application that'll be coming um, in November. I think I said September, November. The next two applications. Thank you, Mr. Red. There's now the time for a public hearing, a continued public hearing for 180 Central Street, site plan review permit. The applicant here. The applicant is here. And our engineer's here, and we're hoping that tonight we'll possibly get all the decision for So, um, Mr. Chair, if you'd like me to review why we continued from the last meeting and that there were five outstanding items essentially that the applicant was requested to provide additional information on for this hearing. I'm going to go Please over do. that briefly. Please. One was the, um, the cell tower determination and uh, town council's told us that's not an issue in terms of this application before the board. This is the issue of proximity to residential lot lines from where their project was allowed. Uh, we've gotten town council's opinion that it is. Uh, and then there was the fire department confirmation that the plan meets their requirements for access and turning templates and so forth. And we received that yesterday that they reviewed it and they have no issues with that. So we got confirmation on that and then there was the um, ongoing request to work with DPW and the town engineer on the water main issue try to work that forward uh, so that we could have some clarity on what to consider approving for the board to consider approving and uh, I think those were the, the main issues there's other, one other minor issue but those were the ones where we requested some follow-up I'll leave it to the applicant. Mr. Chancellor, you, Mr. Riley, you said we received the confirmation from the fire department. 
yesterday? Yes, we got an email from Bill Cross, who normally, among others, Scott Bale and Bill Cross. He reviews the plans, and he indicated that they had reviewed the plans and they had no issues. Okay. Did that issues. email go out to the board? I didn't see it that. went to Nancy and myself, okay. and I forwarded to John. Okay. And, um, so you see how that is? And I assume the yeah, yeah, we have to go to the register. There's no letter from, from the fire department. It's just, I didn't get a letter. I just we got your word saying it was. You, we don't, the writing is in an email. Okay. We don't, we never get. But you didn't forward the email? Yes, you approved three of yeah, them at the same time. Yeah, came to Nancy and I and I forwarded yep. it to the chair, okay. which I normally do. Okay, thank you. So we go back just a little bit tonight with us. We have legal counsel. I asked Mr. Schumer if he would be kind enough to um, join us at this meeting. Uh, we received a, uh, a notification in the index that was prepared by 180 Central Street saying that this has all been approved through town council. I asked to take it one step further because it was just a one-line item. It wasn't a letter from, from our legal counsel. It was a letter from Mr. Chang, I believe. It was an email from Jesse to me. It was okay, it was just, there was nothing but the, the one item on the page that's in the book. So. Not to beat a dead horse, but to take this to the to where it should be. I've asked Jesse uh, to come this evening and help us make a ruling on where this needs to go. If he doesn't mind um, bringing us up to speed on your letter. Certainly, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the record, Attorney Jesse Schumer, uh, Special Town Counsel for the Town of Saugus. The, uh, the request to me, Mr. Chair, uh, from the board was a legal opinion regarding the applicability of uh, section 14.3, subsection 9 of the zoning bylaw, which pertains to your wireless communications overlay district. Uh, specifically, the provision provides that uh, wireless facilities shall not be erected nearer to a residential lot line than 500 feet. Uh, there is existing uh, cellular equipment at this site. My understanding is that this was installed sometime in the 1990s after it was approved by special permits issued by the Board of Selectmen around that time. In my letter that I issued to the board today for your file and for your reference and, and for members' consultation, uh, was a, my legal opinion is that the cited provision of the zoning bylaw is not an impediment to this project. And the reason for that opinion is based on section 17.3, subsection three, which essentially overrides the, uh, the provisions of the wireless communications uh, bylaw, and specifically that 500 foot setback to residential lot lines. And the, the specific provision uh, stated in that bylaw provides that if the provisions of this bylaw are in conflict with any other section of the uh, Saga zoning bylaw, the regulations of the historic mills, HMM, UOD, historic mills mixed use overlay district, uh, shall govern. So in, in my view, and I've run this opinion by Town Council Vassipoli, he agrees with me that that o essentially overrides the 500 foot setback and does not provide an impediment for this project to be approved by the board. That's not, I'll say, uh, an endorsement by Council, either myself or Council Vassipoli. The opinion was limited to uh, the, the question that was posed before us, which is, is the project permittable? by the board. In our opinion, is yes, it is permittable. Uh, the letter goes on to discuss the issue of the existing cellular equipment. In our view, that is a potential issue for the, for I suppose, the operator of the equipment, not necessarily the owner, because I understand that that's subject to an easement between the owner and the operator. In, in my view, and shared by Town Council Vassipoli, the development of the, pro the property with residential use would result in an expansion of the existing non-conforming use uh, constituted by the, the, uh, the cell tower, which is already within 500 feet of local residences. Um, and in our view, that would require the operator of the cell tower to get permission from the Zoning Board of Appeals to continue the cell tower. The recommendation that I suggested to the board in my letter is that you include in your decision, if you do vote to approve this project, you include a, a condition requiring the, the applicant to demonstrate compliance 
with the zoning bylaw by obtaining the necessary relief should it become necessary. Thank you, sir. Nancy, could we get a copy of this letter sent to uh, Attorney uh, Chang? Thank you. Also tonight we have with, with us is our, our peer review consultant, engineer Steve Bully. Um, Steve has got some comments on what, what's been returned. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, I'm Steve Bully of Tetra Tech, uh, town's consulting engineer for this project. Um, we did review uh, the revised plan set. Uh, many, many of our comments had been had been rectified. Um, there were a few outstanding comments related to, to site circulation. Uh, we understand that the, the fire department has signed off uh, on the plan. That was that was a few of our comments. Um, there's not a plan up, but uh, there's a few parking, I think, situations that, that we called out in, in our letter. Um, that we can probably talk about when, when the presentation is, if there's going to be a presentation. Um, we, we weren't planning on it, but I can put the plan up. Yeah, I think it was just, a, I don't know if the board wants to view it. Absolutely, if we got it. Um, other than those parking issues, um, item 21 references uh, the the, uh, the viewing area for the, the river. Um, we were just wondering if there is an actual easement for that area and whether or not the public is going to be allowed to access that um, through through the easement. Um, item 22 doesn't apply because that's the fire department. And then we, we just get, we continue to be a little concerned about the, the 20 foot driveway in between pedestrian uh, you know, circulation through that, uh, potentially from the, the rear parking lot to the front of the building and vice versa. Is that um, the, the dual use or is that the one way use? Uh, the dual. Specific to the parking, uh, these four spaces here with the it's a 90 degree space with 20 feet behind. Um, I just think a, a full size car in here, you know, backing out to do the three point turn might be it's going to be tight in this area. Um, so one suggestion maybe make these compact spaces um, just to limit you know if, if a truck was to park in here like an F350 or whatever that, that's going to have a, a tough time backing out and getting out of there. Um, the other area was up here, uh, you know, if a car is parked here and here and even here, you know, this car would have to back out and it's potentially in conflict with, with any cars parked in, the, in a few of these spaces. So I, I just think this is, got, this is potential for, a, you know, some maneuverability issues. Um, but other than that, I think... It is tight, but that, that, this guy would have to back out. And yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a funky movement that would have to do, so... Um, I just see that being a potential concern. Um, and really, that was pretty much it. The, the fire department access was very tight to this corner, um, and it required them to back out. Uh, I, I had questioned that on, the, on the, the, the letter, but it sounds like the fire department had, had approved that. Yeah, and, and the fire department um, indicated that if there's a fire, they're not going back there. They're staying out on the street, and they they probably wouldn't ever be bringing a uh, fire truck back there. It would be okay. maybe an ambulance or, or uh, something like that if something was going on in the back, but they wouldn't be pulling a ladder truck back there. Okay. Noted. Um, other than that, I think. That's about it. Yeah, those were only real... Steve, have you gotten a copy of the uh, decision from con conservation? We did receive a copy today. 
Um, today. Or yesterday, or was it yesterday? It might have been this morning. I said, oh, would like this today? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I haven't had a chance I to have one, uh, Nelson. I got. I didn't get it until Tuesday, and I was quite shocked to see 95 items with 95 conditions on it. To be truthfully honest, I started to review them, and I just some of them do have a concern to the planning board, um, but we never. I never got to the end. I asked Steve if he has. He only got it today. Um, some of them are in direct conflict with, with what goes on in the back, um, what has been presented. Uh, I don't know if there's any changes to them. I don't know if they're requiring change. We just haven't had, the board hasn't had the time to review them and the shortcoming that we've had since we've got them. Uh, I don't know when they come out. I think, Larry, you received them on a PDF. I, you sent them on Nancy, right? I got them from Nancy. Okay. I can see when I can check the emails and when that was. I didn't get, get the decision to Tuesday Friday morning. Either Friday or Monday. Either Friday or Monday. Mm -hmm. I got it Tuesday morning. Mine was mailed October 12th. I, I can confirm the date. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. Chris, have you, have you seen it? Yes. I spent some time with that decision. And thoughts? It's, I've never seen anything like it, but it's you know, um, a long deliberation. Nancy emailed, uh, emailed it on Monday to um, to John O'Brien, Jeannie. Um, and Monday, I, I apologize for that. Yeah. I know it wasn't until the beginning of the week. Yeah, there should not be, uh, sorry to interrupt, there should not be a conflict with this plan because this is the plan that they made their decision on and they made their, um, made the conditions from. Mr. Chair, if I may. Sure. Uh, for information to you to the board. You may want to ask town council's opinion about your permitting authority, the scope of it here, with this application and proceedings, and relative to the order of conditions. They're both enforceable from different permitting bodies, and um, the CONCON doesn't necessarily bind you and your authority Correct. and your requirements or binding. So, if you need some confirmation on that, whether you can proceed, if you think there's anything in conflict with Concon, that's really a um, responsibility of the applicant to figure out as they move forward with the project. And if they have to come back to us or the Concon to rectify any inconsistencies, that's what they'll need to do. So the town has protected you. Away. So, Mr. Schumer, would you have a comment on that, sir? I, I don't disagree. I do you don't disagree? That's right. You, they're both independent permits the applicant would be required to comply with both. So if there is a conflict between the two, something that, as Chris said, the applicant would need to resolve on their own and potentially come back to the board. <coughs> the board have any other input? I don't have anything right now. Um, Larry Durkin, for the record, town engineer. Um, I think one of my comments on the engineer's report is that engineering DPW need to evaluate the engineer's report and, and provide written comments if there are additional concerns per the report and the Saugus Conservation Commission 10-12-23 uh, uh, order issued order of the conditions. So I think, um, you know, I, in, in, in reviewing the drainage report, you, you know, you need, we need to look at the, the order of conditions. To, and provide comment and any recommendations. I Have believe, that's the, I believe that's the correct process. Uh, I believe you're correct. Have they met all, all the other wishes of the DPW? I, I can address that, and that's one of the reasons uh, the DPW, Mr. Uh, Brennan O'Regan, is here. I think uh, I, I got extra copies. I gave them to you. I don't know if we should give them to uh, I, own, I maybe I didn't bring enough copies. Um, um, what happened to me? I was rear-ended on Sunday um, in a motor vehicle accident, so I 
had a minor had a minor concussion, so I'm, I was out of work Monday and Tuesday, and uh, so I was uh, doing my best. Um, you know, trying to. Um, Mr. O'Regan has been very helpful to help me with the review. I um, and so we were working on this letter this evening and uh, met met and discussed some of the aspects of it earlier in the day. So I think. Um, Mr. Chair, may I, Mr. Turkin? May I share this with the applicant? Please, please, please. I've, I've got it in my. You have one. Can we give one to the engineer, Mr. Mr. And uh, Steve, would you like a, a copy of that? Sure. Anyone else? Sure. A couple of extras. What is that? Uh, this is the uh, basically engineering report. So. Mr. O'Regan's gone out of his way to, to help with the review of, of the plans, and I, and I think, so I'm saying engineering and DPW concerns, um, currently under review at, with project <coughs> letter, letter or letters, either one up letter from uh, self, will be forthcoming, and it's, it, it's with water, sewer, and drain, the principal focus. That's item 1.1. Item 1.2, the Saugus DPW is installing a replacement 10-inch water main valve at the intersection of Central and Elm Streets and is tracing and marking the existing water main from the replacement valve at Central and Elm to the Central Street um, Saugus Bridge. So I think, um, so um, I'll continue to 1.3 uh, utilities, one, utilities 1.3.1 engineering has, uh, I've gone out of my way to um, make good you everything I can in terms yeah, of Yeah, we plans. appreciate it. Yep. And, uh, um, that's what item 1.13 is. 1.2 is recommended that the developers engineer survey in the locations of the existing water main to be included on the site utility plans. So, um, the DP. Yeah, we went out there today to to, um, to locate it, but it wasn't marked. It's not marked yet. That I can't answer for the the DPW had a water break, a water main break yesterday, and I think that altered may have altered okay. the plans. Um, that those take a priority. Um, 1.3.3 engineering sewer plans. Um, I, I got those to you today. Um, I can't find any scanned water plans. I gave you everything I had. I, I got the atlases, but I think Brendan and, and he he, he um, I've got to do another effort. He he thinks that it's likely in the plan file. So I will. I've looked. I'll, I'll take a. Um, there's no index for the water plans. It's it's it's. Uh, you, you almost have to look at them all. It's, 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 a, it's a good amount of effort. Um, the condition of the 1.3.4, the condition of the water main at 180 Central is reported to be in poor condition by the DPW with numerous breaks. Engineering and the DPW will make recommendations for replacement of the water main at 180 Central for the planning board's consideration. Um, I have a figure, it's, it's at the end. This is, this is engineering's recommendation. Um, not necessarily DPW's uh, recommendation. Brendan is here. Um, he can provide his recommendation. So if you look at the last page. Sorry. Yeah, so I, I think, uh, so what that consists of is is um, water main replace, you know, it would be an installation of a new valve just south of the Saugus River Bridge. Um, a new valve installed by 180 Central. The We're recommending a new main all the way to the new valve that's either, not if it, Getting installed tomorrow, or you know, in, in, in the present time, and uh, and then a, a curb to curb uh, um, asphalt replacement, and, and that's outlined on the figure. Um, Mr. O'Regan, he, you know, he he's here, and he can um, give his recommendation. I can continue, or we can, you know, Brendan, um, you're welcome to speak now, or I can continue, and then we can just address everything at the end. Um, um, one of the other things, 1.3.5, engineering and DPW will evaluate the developer provided sewer video to examine the sewer and lateral condition for potential reuse. A recommendation will be made by engineering and DPW to the planning board if the existing sewer can be reused or to be replaced. Um, the plan show PVC, so hopefully that it's relatively new and in good condition. I haven't looked at the video yet, um, and I, you know, I need to look at it with the DPW. Um, it was provided with the um, recent, you know, relatively recently by by the developer. Um, 
Um, I think um, 180 Central will, will need to permit you for sewer infiltration, uh, sewer infiltration and inflow. Um, mostly that's just a fee. I'm, I'm getting up to speed on that. Um, I know in the comments provided for DPRC that a lot of that's in there. Um, and, and yep, we're aware of that, of the fee. Okay, and then uh, 1.5 engineering, and I, I mentioned this already, engineering DPW need to evaluate the drainage report and provide written comments. If there are any, if there are additional considerations per the report and the Saugus yeah. Conservation Commission order conditions. Um, so I think. Um, I would encourage you to use the, um, the comments from Beta and our responses, there are five of them. They reviewed that drainage um, with a fine tooth comb and you can use that as a guide um, but it has been gone through in such detail that's why the 75 conditions um, this is what I said earlier I haven't had a chance to review them all that's correct and I, and I think as the board so. but th that data is available um, excellent well Steve's here I, we've been working really well together I'm, I'm making sure he gets all the documents so I can I can um, you know reach out to Steve. You know, first of all, I need to read it myself and give the DPW an opportunity to look at it as well. Um, we understand you've gone through, you know, the, you've gone to the nth degree with the planning board and it's 91 conditions. So I don't anticipate. I, I think it's just just checking. Um, and then 1.6, the e engineering and DPW will review, comment, and approve um, or deny the site utility and drainage building permit. Um, after the, um, I, I, I some, I'm going to clean my language up there. Um, uh, you know, basically for the inspectional services, it, it's the building permit. So, so when they come for the building permit, that's when the, uh, um, that's when any water work, sewer work, uh, need to be, you know, we'll look at it again. But I think, um, the idea is to, you know, give you all everything we got now. So, so. No surprises at that point, and uh, and after after the building permit get issued, I didn't. It's not on the memo, but then then you'll be coming for street opening, um, in 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 trunk permits. If, if I may, uh, is this this is what you're intending? You're you're intending for us to do, or is that from the engineer? That yes. that's my that's my recommendation. I, the deep the is, DPW's here is to replace the whole water main from one end of our property to the other. Essentially, the central street. essentially, I, 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 there's the bridge of the Saugus River, so right. it would you know looking right. to install a new valve there, and then and then that would be I to see. the. Yeah. Um, how many feet is that? It's about 250, maybe. Right. Um, no, it's it's about three ten. All right, so call, call it three hundred feet. If the, the only thing that, and I don't know if we even discuss it right now. Um, so uh, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see him finish this. Yeah. And if you reserve your questions, we can bring Mr. Regan up, yeah. and the two of them can answer the questions. Well, I, I'm that's finished. Oh, you're finished. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Regan, do you have any input? Uh, sure. Maybe you could help the applicant. Do you mind if you still need this up or take it have up? To. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Larry um, had some personal issues that he was dealing with today, so mm -hmm. we didn't, uh, I'm sorry, earlier this week, so we didn't have an opportunity to meet earlier in the week. It's understandable because of the issues he had. Um, I'm really had been given the opportunity to look at this information today. Um, Larry mentioned before about the sewer issues. The sewer I mentioned made about the sewer video being available. I'm not aware of that today. Um, and um, just want to kind of correct the record. It, it, I don't believe Larry's waiting on anything from me. He's 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 uh, just needs to be given the opportunity to present the information so that we can get these things addressed. Specifically to answer the question, um, the water main is an unliable water main um, and we would be looking for that to be replaced. Um, the limits I would need to confirm, but it's 90 plus percent accurate. So, 
think that was the one question that was asked. There was other questions. There are other concerns that we have. I don't know if Larry, you, you, I don't believe you mentioned these, but we we are all familiar with the drainage issues that have existed in in this area. Uh, we've solved the majority of them um, with the project that the town bore uh, approximately six seven years ago. Spent 1.5 million dollars to do a drainage project on the Elm Street uh, area and a few streets further north of that. There are still some existing issues there that we'd uh, like uh, to speak with this uh, developer about to see what they might be willing to do to assist us in that regard. Um, again, just seeing this essentially for the first time right uh, in the last few days, just want to uh, mention that those were the two major ones that stuck out to me. So, but thank you for your thank indulgence. You, thank you. Mr. Bocelli, do you have any more questions? Yeah, if I may. Um, Please come so, to the podium. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> so it's actually, um, uh, are we, so are we saying this is necessary? I, yes, it's a, it's an unreliable water main. Okay. And it's, you think this is reasonable, the necessary and reason, reasonable to do the whole length? Um, we just I'm just trying to figure out feasibility, you know, uh, obviously costs Cost more now than right. six years when we first started right. so um, uh, Six years ago um, I don't think doing that whole thing is going to make the project feasible um, so uh, That probably squashed the whole project. So I'm just trying to think of a way to kind of determine perhaps you know, some sort of a, you know, do you know a cost per lineal foot for what? I wouldn't want to say that, you know, right now. I'd, I'd rather, as I said, I believe I said earlier that I recently just made aware of some information. Yeah. Um, costs have actually gone down in the last six to eight months compared to last year. Um, when you, it, reasonable roughly, like a, yeah, like a rough, rough estimate I, of I, a I lineal would, foot. I would, I would actually need to measure that out okay. and, and then. Yeah, call it 300 feet, you know. I'd rather not be quoted okay. to an exact because when you split the private sector can do it for yeah. versus what the public sector can yeah. do it for, those that's a prevailing wages that need to be paid, though that is a totally different uh, yeah. estimate. So to mislead you wouldn't be appropriate. Yeah. So so may, maybe we have a discussion after. Um, well, I'm willing to yeah. meet with you and discuss kind of anything get to and discuss anything you'd like to discuss. Yeah. More than willing to do that. All right. All right. I think that's it. Thank you. So at this time, do I have a motion from the board? Is, oh, this question. is a public hearing. I'm I sorry. I had one quick question, Mr. Chair. So on number 15, um, when you were talking about the parking spaces that you had concerns with, Mr. Bully? Correct. Um, I'm just looking at number 15 where it says um, it's going to be parking spaces are in front of the loading dock where the trash receptacles are going to be removed? Oh, yes, that's in the, the rear, yep. Yeah, how does, how does that, 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 that was a prior plan, the, the trash is inside now. It's inside, but when it comes out, when the trash trucks have to pull up to the loading dock to get the trash out, how, how will the trash come out? They wheel it out. They're, they're going to um, wheel it out from inside out to the front entrance. Oh, okay. All right, so that won't affect those parking spots? Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's all. The only question I had. Any other board questions? This is a public meeting. Do we have anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, I'd like to close the public. The, uh, let's see, the, the public comments. Comments. <coughs> Excuse me. Public comments. Public comments on the meeting. And possibly get a motion from the board as to how they'd like to proceed with this. So just for, for clarification, um, they've satisfied all of the board's needs except for DPW. Now you're saying that this is a this is a big difference. So I guess I would say how would we proceed from this? Do we Continue it until they settle out this water main issue, or I mean, what would you recommend? 
I mean, we'd, we'd be just piling more conditions on top of the conditions that they've already been dealt with. Jesse, what would you rec your recommendation to the board on this situation? Uh, well, listening to the conversation tonight, it seems like this issue is something that TPW and the applicant need to have a discussion about to, mm -hmm. to determine how they're going to proceed. Does the has the board already discussed conditions relating to that matter? We we've discussed some conditions as of the last meeting, Mr. Riley, and you've drawn up a draft of that. I provided the board with a draft decision as. Uh, brought up at the last meeting and okay. um, the board requested that in agreement with me that I should prepare that and provide it. So um, has, you has all should have it and it contains a lot of these issues that we previously discussed including the protection uh, for the town, <coughs> the eventual review and approval of all utilities by TPW and the engineering department. So the town is fully protected as we discussed. It was a concern by uh, Mr. Durkin and so forth. Well, if all these things are, aren't agreed on, you know, how is the town going to be uh, protected if you approve the project? And there's language in there that I provided you so that you can deliberate on that. It, it's extensive. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, read it uh, verbatim, but as we I'll give you one specific uh, condition related to all this discussion. And this is uh, condition number, draft, condition number 11. This is all the draft prepared for the board. I don't approve anything. It's just a recommendation That's to correct. the board. Uh, a monetary contribution to be determined by the DPW director for necessary improvements to the water main and Central Street associated with the development shall be provided within 30 days of the filing of this decision with the town clerk. This is condition language consistent with what we've required of other approved projects, namely 150 Salem Turnpike. And then there's some more redundant language to that effect because the draft decision, is, as you see, and as you've been provided, breaks things down according to prior to the issuance of a building permit, prior to the issuance of a certificate, certificate of occupancy. So it's all sequential and very orderly. Um, and most of the standard condition language that's front-loaded to that is language that to the extent possible I've taken from town council from Jesse that he's provided for uh, previous approvals. So that's the gist of the whole thing without getting into the nitty-gritty, but um, that's an example of the language that's in here to account for the fact that there is not complete resolution on the issue of utilities at this point. I can answer any other questions on the draft decision. Or I, I do not have copies, but like <coughs> anything like the peer review report from Mr. Boulay, anything that's provided to the planning board prior to the meeting before it's entered into the public record, that is pr proprietary information for the planning board. Once it enters the public realm, then it's a public document. And it's available to anyone, including the applicant. But I haven't shared this with anyone but you. I can, um, if you like, I can give it to town council so you can take a look at it. I was just going to ask that question. And if town council would be so inclined, you Probably not okay. right, right when we're sitting here, but uh, happy to take a look. I think just for the board's benefit, if you are at the, at the point in the public hearing where you feel comfortable closing the hearing, I want to make sure you understand that what that means is you can't accept any new information or evidence on this project. So if there are items that you consider to be open, such as the resolution of this matter regarding the, the water main, that's new information that potentially could not come into the to your consideration once the hearing is closed. Once you do close the hearing, you have 14 days to issue the decision, so you're on a pretty tight time frame uh, to do that. So that would, that would put the parties on a pretty quick uh, time frame to resolve this issue. Uh, if it were me, you asked the question what, what I would do if it were me and I were representing the applicant, I would want a little more certainty than the condition that uh, Chris described with respect to that arrangement for the water main. Mm -hmm. As it's drafted, it seems a little ambiguous, and of course Larry would never do this, but it could be interpreted as him being able to come in and say, I want a blank check for whatever it requires. I think, I think it's to both parties' benefits to have a little bit more certainty on what that condition is going to require. Not to single you out, Larry, of course. Um, that's fine, and I, and I think one of the next days in the process is, is 
one of the reasons I, I'm, you know, providing as much utility information to the engineer, developers engineer as I can, is so the, the plans can accurately f reflect on the ground. And if we move forward to some extent, whatever extent is agreed to with the water main replacement, the plans come again to engineering for review at the building permit. And, and so I think at that stage, that's when I need to have the plans um, nailed down. In, in, um, yes, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but we need to um, know what the cost um, of that, and, and this is the first that we, not the first, there was a discussion about it recently, but the first that we've had an indication of what the extent of the um, repair and repavement is, and we need to get a handle on what the water system is because there are, I don't know how many services there are off of it, and uh, we'll have to uh, price that out and see if it can, uh, the project can support it. Um, so it's it's not just getting the the lines on the plans; it's, it's um, understanding the system and, and being able to price it out so we can evaluate. It can be done by the next meeting. If if I may, um, through through you. Uh, it's it's public, so if okay. you would wouldn't mind. Okay, yeah. Um, so there's only so much budget. Obviously, everybody knows that. So yeah, like you said, uh, Mr. Schumer, um, we can't really have a blank check. So I think, in you know, we've continued this meeting. This has been going on this project for six years. So, and this is the first we've seen this. So, um, as it may, I mean, could would the board be inclined, you know, to probably lock down a, 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 a fee, um, you know, assess a fee while, while we have DPW here and engineering here? Um, would, would it be something that we could just, you know, have a... a, a uh, what do you call it? A um, contribution. A contribution of something, of um, some sort, just in case of a break in that area, or you know, maintenance-wise and all that stuff. I think that's a discussion that you should have with with the DPW. Um, okay. Once you review the record, I mean, it, to me personally, it, but I'd have to ask the board their opinion of it. Um, something that we weren't prepared for yeah so it's uh, I, I know we're very close yeah here I just think it's a little premature to jump on this tonight with all the conditions that, that remain out there I'd like to see some of the conditions met um, prior and if we have 14 days I, I'd like to have the opportunity to take the 14 days there's one condition right well no Chris has read some conditions that and the, the, the the one that's, that's outstanding oh, right now the draft decision. is that this DPW uh, request for the water line change. So, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Just in terms of where this discussion goes, so now this is a public record because we brought it into the public hearing. Correct. So, I'll share the draft decision if it's a pleasure of the board with the applicant. They can see the whole thing. And I would say on this particular condition, it gets the applicant to yes, but that's all it does. I've never seen an applicant agree to this type of open-ended language, as Mr. Schomer is indicating. It's effectively a blank check, but I think what the applicant is suggesting is what's called an upset limit. And it's a contribution that's capped at a certain number. And then that's a figure that they can work with, um, and then they can do their pro forma and understand exactly whether the project's still feasible. That's where it always goes in my experience with you know, many projects like this. But so let me ask you, is that it wouldn't be the, at the discretion of the board to accept the fee at this time when we don't even know what it's going to cost? Just pleasure to the board. All of this is just for the benefit of the board. I've prepared a draft decision for your deliberation and the rest, the details are up to the board and the applicant and other input that uh, your staff provides. So, but that is the missing, you know, 
$64,000 question, and I think we're talking about something more from that. I, I think the, you know, in the last engineer's report, I, I did bring up that, you know, I thought at a minimum we would look to replace the request for the water, a recommendation for the water main in the facility. Um, you know, when we get building permit applications, you know, we, do we, we don't always grant reuse of the utility of the, of the sewer laterals or the, or the water connections. You know, a lot of it depends on the condition. So that's something we do at the building, building when the building part comes. You know, make, I brought it up to make it part of the conversation now. Um, you know, it's really up to the, I mean, I, I can't speak for the DPW staff, but if they're walking, walking the mod, water main, we can possibly mark out the water surfaces as the DPW mark out the water surfaces in that area as well. Um, you know, I, I, you know the, I think Mr. O'Regan's point is there's a cost difference between private work and, and municipal work with prevailing wage. It, it's, you know, it's, it could be quite a bit more cost effective. So I think, um, you know, the, the engineer, I, I, you know, assume, you know, they're used to doing engineering estimates for costs and so, um, you know, I would assume that would be the first place to start is, is to get an idea of cost. Um, uh, Mr. O'Regan has had minimal time to review the plans, and some of that's my fault, um, and, um, and then some of my health issues. So, you know, there needs to be some discussion. Uh, you know, I think, I'm not sure how to resolve it, but I think we've got to look at the, you know, what the beast is, and then, you know, what the whole scope is, and then, you know, you, you guys look at a cost, preliminary cost estimate. I'm, I mean, there's got to be a discussion with... Uh, Mr. 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 O'Regan, um, do you have any input into this? Sure, thank you. Um, I'll try to keep the editorial comments to a minimum. So I definitely understand what you're going mm -hmm. through. I've spent a third of my career yep. in the private sector, so I know what it means to meet a budget and a deadline and scope and things along those lines. Appreciate that. Um, I'll rearrange my schedule. I'll, I'll, I'll meet with you tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow morning, you know, what, I'll meet yeah. with you just... I know that's uh, difficult to for you. You might have to rearrange, but tomorrow, Monday, whatever, I mean, right. we, we, whenever yeah. you want, try to whether it be this issue, whether it be the drainage issue. We haven't looked at the sewer video yet, so I don't. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning, probably won't have all the information. But I'll, if Larry, you have the, the have video, it. okay. Yeah. So if you can show me where the video is, and we'll take the time to look at that. Uh, so maybe late morning we we'll work with you and see what we can work on. I know that doesn't help you tonight. You know, it, it's, um, I won't call it a false promise, but it's, it's not gonna help you right now. But I'll rearrange my whole schedule to meet with you sometime tomorrow if that's acceptable. So. I'm, I'm not, if I'm included, I'm not, I'm at eight o'clock or nine o'clock and 10 o'clock. So I'm not free till 11 o'clock. Right, so I know it doesn't help you out tonight. But 11 o'clock would work. You want to set it right now? I'll set it right now. All right, yeah. 11 o'clock. So, so for, just to, to clarify, um, once you meet, you think you'll have a better idea of of what he's looking at? And yeah, so, so is this something that, like, he could put a contribution into it and then the town would pick up the rest of that water main? Or no, no, how does that work yeah, when he says put a, a cap on so it? So our, our perspective right now is we would rather them do the work. Um, contributions that... I don't want to go on record as saying that that, that would be <coughs> something that the town would consider. Okay. I believe it's going to have to require some discussion, some discussion, a lot of discussion <laughs> with these people here, some discussion amongst Larry and myself and the people we work with. Um, so even if we meet tomorrow, I don't believe you're going to have an answer tomorrow, but you could have an answer probably as early as Monday or Tuesday. But um, it, there'll be multiple options that I, you know, uh, we just met, we just talked about three specific issues that we're talking about. Uh, there's other minor, extremely minor issues. Uh, sidewalk is listed as four feet. It should be five feet. The uh, pavement, Petuma's pavement, you know, top coat inch should be inch and a half. These are all very minor compared, cost-wise, compared to the things we're talking about right now. So I think that what we're talking about is, from a order of magnitude, what we should be talking about. Yeah. But there's so many variables, uh, Ms. Meredith, that, Ms. Meredith, that is, it's too, it's too, I couldn't give you an exact answer to that question because there's too many variables that could happen. Uh, 
So I guess what I'm looking for is, do you, is this something that you think we can come to resolution if we continue this to the two weeks, to November 2nd or 3rd, whatever, what is? In my professional opinion is yes. Okay. That there should be no, absolutely no reason why we couldn't come to, I mean, you're, if this gentleman is going to say I'm going to give you 50 cents, then, <laughs> then the answer is probably, at least he'll have it. You'll be able to give him the, the information. Is, so, is what I'm saying. So I'm not looking for a blank check, by the way. So, so I just I said that just because of the two extremes that were mentioned. You know, blank check, 50 yeah. cents. We got we got we got to meet somewhere in the middle. That's right. The right. blank check and yeah. that you know it's a little scary. Right. So, right. Right. so uh, there's no it, we can't really go forward with an open ended. Right. So well, we understand that. It is totally understandable. And I don't think we're going to take place. Yeah. We don't know what well, that 11 o'clock tomorrow, I think we totally said it. And, uh, I think if we continue, right? Uh, yeah, probably we can continue to the, uh, to the next meeting of the office. Yeah. I don't think you want to bring your engineer as he's available as well. I'll be here. There you go. There's a motion from the board. Sorry, guys. Do we reopen the public hearing? Because I think. They just close the public comment. We didn't close it just to public comment. There's no one here. So we're going to make a motion to continue the. Public hearing till November second. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes four to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Oh. Thank you very much. Get it there by tomorrow. <laughs> I might sleep tonight. <laughs> Please do so. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Mr. Chair. Sir. In terms of the draft city, is the board going to give me any feedback? Yes. Uh, yes we'll have council look at it and then we'll look at it. You should mention um, the continued public hearing. You should mention it. You should mention that the 1631 was continued. I can do that. Next on the agenda was a public hearing for 1631-1639 for a site plan review. The applicant has asked for a continuance to, just to be on the public record. The second one was a public hearing for a Bowler Road, the extension of the, the definitive Subdivision permit. The applicant has also asked for a continuance on that, which brings us to an informal discussion with date 60 for a site plan review. And I will pass this over to Jeannie Merritt. Hi. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Rick Salworth, Engineering Alliance. Uh, here with me this evening uh, is Andrew Schaefer from Lassessi, who's the developer, um, and his attorney, uh, Paul Feldman. Uh, I think the request was for an update um, to the board, so I think, uh, I think with that I'll turn it over to Andrew, let him let you folks know where the project's at. A lot of the stuff is architectural and building in nature, you know, not so much site civil, so I'll let him uh, fill you in on where it's at. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. As Rick stated, uh, Andrew Schaefer with Lasessi Development. I represent 860 Broadway. Uh, just here for a quick uh, schedule update and kind of where we're at in terms of progress. Uh, so right now we have four total buildings on site. There's a pet spa trash building, uh, building one, one through three are residential buildings. We have 245 units uh, with a small uh, affordable component. That's in process right now. The agreement with the town, I believe it's in your guys' court uh, for filing. Uh, right now, expected completion dates. Pet Spa is expected in January of 24. Building 1, which is the first residential building, is expected in March of two, uh, 2024. Uh, building 3, we're expecting in October of 24. And Building 2, which is the last one to be built, is expected in December of uh, 2024. Um, right now, Building 1 is the furthest one along. It's completely framed, scanned. Uh, finishes are going in place right now. Building 3, which is actually the second one in terms of progress, 
uh, all the foundations are in. I believe the foundation survey has been submitted. They installed or are installing a fire uh, hydrant this week that should give us approval to pull the building permit. Uh, all the lumber materials are on order, submitted. Uh, they should be scheduled in the next couple weeks. And then the third and final building, which is actually building number two, is listed on the drawings. Uh, the drill rig uh, is on site as of today, and they're going to commence blasting later this week. So foundations for the last building are going to be going in here shortly. Thank you. I just had a couple questions that were um, brought to our attention. <coughs> so um, there was a fence that was installed on the um, on the driveway road when you're coming in from the highway. Yes, ma'am. There that was wasn't a, on the plan. So there was a dilapidated fence that was shown on the on the plans on the property line. So as we started clearing, which is shown on the drawings as well, the fence had to be replaced, and that was an agreement between us and the mobile home park. Okay. So there was a fence shown that's on, that's on the original site plan. Okay, I didn't see that on the plan. Um, and then the electrical service um, was going to be underground electrical service on the plans. Um, there, were, there was some talk about that they now may be installing utility poles. Did that change? No, ma'am. The, the electrical on the site is underground once it comes up to our site. The entry drive on the way in, we're at the mercy of National Grid. They come out and they do their own uh, survey and they put their own drawings together so i think there's five poles that lead up the main drive till it goes underground right at the corner of the roundabout where the trash building is okay. and then there are you know underground and then transformers at each building okay thank you and then um, on the northeast corner there was going to be a rip wrap wall and it's just dirt right now is that still the plan yes, that they're going to complete that okay and then um there was some concern that the site contract site contractor has changed yes, three different times. Yes, ma'am. So uh, I was just wondering who's going to be responsible for providing the board with the as built now? The, the current site contractor. Current site contractor. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is there any particular reason that keeps changing, or is everything? It only changed once, ma'am. Uh, Caruso Corp held, held the original contract. They defaulted, which has never happened to us before. Um, but the the uh, GC, the general contractor. Mm -hmm. They have what's called subguard, subcontractor sub default insurance. They were able to quickly switch them out, and Jay Reed is assembled on site. I think Mr. Durkin and our GC and some members of Jay Reed met last week because they're going to start trenching and getting the utilities and, and underground in on site. Okay, so it's Jay Reed coming? Jay Reed, yes, ma'am. Okay. And I can address it at some point. I think, um, you know, I've been in contact with, with Steve. And, uh, and we did have a site meeting to meet the contractor. Um, Doug Zorn, the superintendent, was there. And um, so I had asked Doug for a, what plans were left for water, sewer, and drain. He provided those to me. Um, so we met Reed for the first time. And actually, we have another meeting set up for 9 o'clock tomorrow, um, the DPW uh, water, um, uh, water foreman is coming out. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're discussing um, pressure testing and disinfection. Um, the contractor um, wants to get ahead of it, and so we, we know the expectations. Um, part of the inspection responsibilities for water and sewer, Steve can talk about all the other inspections that, that TetraTech is doing, but um, that's we agreed it's going to be coordinated through um, Tucker Preparity. Um, um, I will also be doing water and sewer inspections. And I think part of the reason tomorrow we have the water foreman out there is so that he's familiar where things on the ground. So if 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 uh, Tetra can't do it, if I can't get out there, basically we want to look at things before everything's buried. Um, so we've got three potential backups. We've got Tetra Tech, myself, and I think by walking the site with the water foreman tomorrow, um, and he'll be out there for the witness and the pressure testing. He'll he'll be out there witnessing the disinfection. I get all the results. So, so I, I, you know, I think that, um, you know, I, I just want to say my initial impression with the con this this current contractor is he seems excellent. Uh, you know, I think um, it seemed good. I, it, you know, his his concern was the <coughs> pressure testing. Sometimes, if you put in an additional valve, it makes it easier, and so he's willing to do that. Some of it at his own expense, and so, you know, I, I know the that'll, I know the water form will appreciate that. So I. So I think the goal, to, you know, we've met once, and, and so the agreement, and, and uh, I know 
Um, Tetratrex is also going to be uh, inspecting the installation, uh, the installation of the uh, uh, parking, the infiltration structures, to, and and so, you know, typically engineering is water, sewer, drain. So I think that's more in, in um, Tetratrex court, but I but I want to um, get familiar with it as well. And Steve, do you want to speak to the other inspections that Tetratrex is performing? Yeah, we do the, the standard weekly inspection for the board for, for progress, um, but certainly with, with having the additional utility inspections and stormwater, uh, that adds you know, obviously some scope to, to what we do. So we can do it all. It's just you know, I think it makes sense for one, one, you know, one company to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it more efficient. But um, so sp that's Speaking of that, we're, we're getting low on peer review funds, so they need to be replenished as well. I would have to defer that to Mr. Feldman or Mr. Salvo. Okay. And then um, they, I was told that they changed the size of the pet spa. Is that accurate? No, ma'am. No? It's the same? Okay. And they're still working off the same original approved set of plans, correct? Well, there are some modifications that, again, Mr. Salvo can probably expound upon a little better than I could, but we are working off the approved set of plans. We're working off the plans that this board approved with the special conditions. I met with the site contractor last Friday and confirmed that he has the correct set of programs. Okay. So there are no modifications? There were modifications that were submitted to the board. Oh, That's okay. Okay, um, I guess that's it. And so then I would just talk to you again about the peer review. Well, Mr. Feldman, we're um, down to, I think we're at $300 left, and now you're, we have additional work to do for the... Yeah, I, and so um, I just heard from the client that he, he's paid $40,000 in review fees for site plan review. I'm trying to understand the bylaw provision in the town of Saugus that the board is operating under to ask for review fees and that kind of money. I, I couldn't find it. I've been through your general bylaws. I've been through the zoning bylaw. I've been through every conceivable um, um, act of the town to try to understand um, why the property owner is being asked to pay for review fees. I don't see any authority for it. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is this board made us document that the entire infrastructure is privately owned, privately maintained, and privately operated. There's no public infrastructure on this project at all. There's a connection to the public system that obviously needs to be inspected because we're tying into the public system, and it was. So before I've advised the client, after giving $40,000, after we have emails from the planner that says, we're not going to even spend $5,000. And we have subsequent emails saying, oh, you're well over the amount of money we're not going to need. I need to understand on what basis he's being asked to pay more money. And so I can understand it. And then we can uh, authorize it. If not, you know, one of the things I'm going to want to figure out is how do we get him reimbursed for the money that's already been spent? Because I don't know the basis for it. So I just need to understand that I'm not saying no. I need to understand how the board gets to ask for review fees on private infrastructure. Well, it is in our bylaws that, that we can ask Which for Which bylaw? They, I, I, tell me the bylaw. I can't Mr. find Mr. Rowley, you have it handy with, uh, under our bylaw? I don't have, the, I don't have my binder with, me with the bylaws. It's not the subdivision okay. rules and regulations. It's in a subdivision. We're not doing a subdivision. There's provisions under that. It's not there. I'm not sure. I can't quote it off the no, top no, of my no, head, no. but that's what we've been doing. And if there was an issue, then why would you have been going along with it? And as because far as the amount, I don't know. Mr. I don't Riley have it in front of me. He's been so. assured by Mr. Riley in emails that we'll have, we'll do this. The first time we did it is because there was issues with the town engineering department not having capacity. Mr. the ball we was changing. He was uh, working a couple of days a week. And so the applicant didn't want to not have this project go because the municipality has was short on staff. We said, sure, for now we'll 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 pay. But we don't understand the entire inspections that are going on. This is all private infrastructure. We don't understand the whole basis for it. So I'll wait for Mr. Riley to send me the bylaw. I'm happy to wait for it. I couldn't find it. I tried to find it. Yeah, Madam Chair, if I may, I don't I don't think it's productive for the applicant's attorney to personalize things and direct it as though I'm 
the only one that's required this. Uh, at the time, there was a fee for review of the modification plans. Yeah. And I mentioned that we were requiring $5,000 as we had with other applicants for that and that alone. So this representation that Mr. Riley said this and Mr. Riley assured that, it's not true and I have it all in email. So we can, we can go through and um, go through the various requests for money that the applicant willingly provided and understood it was for site inspections to keep the project progressing. Or we can have this conversation. I, it's, it's a pleasure of the board, but um, it's just not true that I only said this amount was going to be required and I assured that it's just, it's, it's not true. Respectfully, Mr. Riley, we're just trying to understand exactly what they were for because we were kind of blindsided with it when we were trying to get the permits in the beginning of the project. The request was made. We supplied $10,000 or put it into an escrow account. We were made to believe that the money was coming back and those ins there was going to be money coming back at the end of the project and those inspections were for the point of connection. We were subsequently required to provide a letter. I personally had to write it an acknowledgement that we were going to handle all maintenance, uh, care, operation of everything from those points of connection on both sides of the property onto the property. <coughs> There was a subsequent uh, request made, I think, in June, and I can supply all this in June of 2021, where we had asked, we were just trying to understand what the exact requirement was going to be so we could budget properly. We said $10,000 at that time. I said we would give you $20,000 to avoid any further requests. There was another request made about six months later to which we replenished another $10,000. And now there's been another request, and I simply asked what this was for. We're not comfortable providing it until we understand exactly what's going on. So again, we're here to work with the town. We like to be good partners. We're a responsible developer. This is just the first time that multiple requests have been made, have been made to replenish an escrow fund that was never okay. well, substantiated. We'll get that information over to you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And if I misrepresented something or misstated something, I apologize for Mr. Riley. Appreciate that. Um, you had, but, uh, Okay, and so I apologize. I will tell you that the request for a view fee over the modification of the site plan is perfectly appropriate because a statute authorizes the board to have third, par third party reviews of applicants submitting materials. Have a, no problem. We, we understand that. It's the inspection process that we're trying to understand that, that this applicant is, uh, has been on where it comes from. That's what we're trying to understand. Okay, well, we'll get you that information. I think from, you know, coming, being in the job just over six months, I think my understanding is that the water main construction on the access road, um, Stantec um, was paid to oversee that installation. Now, that was not money paid by the developer. That was paid on um, leftover engineering fees from because Todd Baldwin wasn't working full-time. So, so they were not paid by, by you gentlemen. Um, I, I think when Caruso was on site, um, I did all the inspections. They, they would call me and, and I came out. I think part of, part of Tetra Tech is generally sending out their inspector once a week. I don't he's probably not there more than a couple hours. And, and uh, so I don't think that's considerable time. And I think the thing I mentioned is you know, we're not looking to Tetra Tech to do the pressure testing inspection, the, the, the disinfection inspection, you know, and I'm just looking for the records. And I think, you know, if, if I, I'm just, you know, he's potential coverage mm -hmm. if I can't get there. And I think part of the process is, is, you know, I can't, I have no control over the DPW staff, but, you know, the goal tomorrow is to get the DPW water department familiar with the installation so that, that there are potential in inspectors. That's why, and you and I have discussed this before, VFO, and we were just a little taken aback that we'd run through $40,000 when Tetra Tech out there for a couple hours a week. I that's didn't realize it had been $40,000. Yes, so. yes. Wow. Okay. But that's also peer review, too, isn't it? No, sir. That was separate with that's the, that was that was with the permit pickup. Forty thousand dollars in inspection in inspecting this project so far to date. We have no idea what the money is, and we don't know the basis. Okay. Well, we'll look into that and right. get you some answers. We appreciate so that. I didn't. I don't see the numbers, so I didn't realize it had been that much money. So, okay. 
Thank you. Thank you for the update. Thank you. Does the board have anything else for them before they? No? Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chair, we have anything else? The board have any other requests at this time? No, sir. I request a motion to adjourn. Uh, second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you.